Hi, I'm Krista Handley. Welcome to another edition of 7-Minute Sunday School. This past week, my husband, who is a pastor, and another pastor friend of ours have been teaching a group of young people about walking with God. It's been pretty amazing to see how much the Bible talks about how and where to walk and how and where not to walk. For instance, we're supposed to walk in the Spirit, walk in truth, walk in faith, obedience, and love. We're to walk the right road, walk on the right side of the road, like the Good Samaritan who crossed from the side of the road he was on to the other side of the road to administer aid to the person who had been beaten and robbed. We're not to walk in circles like the children of Israel, and we're to make sure we're not walking with the wrong type of person. More specifically, in the book of Proverbs, we are told not to be the companions of fools. The guys covered all of those topics all through this week, so you can see there are quite a few references about walking with God, and there are many more besides these. I believe that each one of those aspects of walking with God could be a separate seven-minute Sunday school. Some of them may even need a part two or three if they're to be covered in this seven-minute time frame, but instead of going through each one of those, I want us to look at three very simple principles that are foundational when it comes to walking with God. In fact, as believers, these foundational principles of walking should be daily practices for us. Before I get into three to into the three principles, let's think about what it's like to walk with another human being. If we want our time of walking together to be fruitful, there are some things that are just obvious. To walk together, we need to be walking in the same direction. If we're walking in opposite directions, we can't enjoy one another. We can't even hear one another. Obviously, to walk with God, we need to be going in the same direction. In other words, we need to align our will with His. He's the one who knows what's best for us. So when we decide to go where He leads... We get to enjoy conversation together. We can hear what he's trying to tell us. Seems like that would be obvious, wouldn't it? And yet how many times do we think we know a shortcut and we find ourselves walking in the opposite direction from where we know God is trying to take us? So let's go back to those three foundational principles. In the Old Testament book of Micah, the prophet says this in chapter 6, verse 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? Let's first remember that this was written to the Israelites of that day. Their desire was to do all the right outward things to please God, like burnt offerings and other types of sacrifices, as recorded here in Micah chapter 6. They were asking what they should bring to God. But Israel's focus was on their external religious rites. Verse 8 follows with God's answer. He has told you, O man, what is good. In other words, Israel should have already known the answer to their questions. The answer to Israel's sin problem was not more sacrifices. It was rather a change of heart. Without the change of heart, all those outward expressions we're nothing more than hypocrisy. So if we're going to apply this to our lives today, it's a heart towards God that should lead us to act justly, to love mercy, and here's the walk part, to walk humbly. There's so much that could be explored concerning the topics of justice and mercy, but in the spirit of the topic of walking, let's just focus on that last part, walking humbly. The Apostle Paul tells the Colossians in chapter 3, verse 12, to put on humility like clothing. James, in his epistle, chapter 4, verse 6, reminds us that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Proverbs eleven two 2 tells us that with the humble is wisdom. Philippians, chapter 2, points out that Jesus made himself nothing and took on the nature of a servant. We see that played out beautifully when he washed the feet of his disciples in the Last Supper, as depicted in the Gospels. We walk humbly because Jesus did. But the bonus is grace, wisdom, and guidance. 
A second foundational way to walk, as Paul says, is properly. In Paul's letter to the Romans, he says in chapter 13, verse 13, let us walk properly as in the day. That word properly can be translated decently. You can see where that translation comes in when you read the rest of the verse. It says, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. Most of us don't need for it to be pointed out that revelry and drunkenness and lewdness and lust are bad ideas. But what about those last two? What about strife? and envy. It's disheartening to see believers drawn into strife and envy just by checking and engaging in social media. We envy something that we see on social media or we get into arguments about things. We engage in strife and envy. The third mode of walking that we're looking at today is walking in good works. As believers, we are quick to point out that good works won't save us. That's absolutely true. And as a side note, by the way, if that's news to you, I challenge you to look at Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Titus 3, 5, and Galatians 2, 21. Because if our good deeds are what gets us to heaven, then why did Jesus have to die? But right after that Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 scripture comes verse 10, which says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Christians should be known for doing good things. Better yet, doing the good things that God has prepared for us to do. Some of us are known more for the strife and the envy part. So walk in good works. Walk decently and walk humbly. This has been Krista Hanley for 7-Minute Sunday School.